Studies with Dr. Ray Winston, a powerful and in-depth study of the Word of God. Dr. Ray? Psalm 119, 105 says, That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, welcome to Word Studies. I am Dr. Ray. And I want to thank God for the opportunity to study with you the ever-living Word of God. Hebrews 4, 12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Welcome again to Word Studies. On this program, we study in depth the words of God. Recently, we have been studying on the pneumaticon. Pneumaticon, of course, is a Greek word for spiritual things, spiritual matters, things of the spirit. In particular, we're going to be looking at something that is perhaps off the beaten path. However, we were talking about that, that sometimes in many churches, uh, teaching from the book of Revelation is something that is uh, the last thing that they want to do. And uh, I understand why, that many times people or in general, yeah, even uh, pastors and teachers and so forth like that, theologians, um, believe that you can't not possibly understand the book of Revelation. But it is there for a purpose, yes, written by God, given to the Apostle John some 2,000 years ago. And it's still appropriate, if you will, for us today, yeah, <clears throat> the book of Revelation. Plus, along with studying and or teaching the book of Revelation, there is a special blessing, yeah, a special blessing. Have you ever heard of a uh, spe- that There was a song called Special Love. Remember that song? <laughs> but we've got a special blessing for you. In addition to the blessings that you already have, we know you already have blessing. You're blessed. Yeah. You're born again. You're filled with the Spirit. You're speaking tongues. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's good. Yeah. You're a doer of the Word of God. But there are blessings uh, in the book of Revelation that are not contained as it were in the other books. Yeah. And it says, it lets us know that. <clears throat> now, Therefore, that's why we're here in the book of Revelation. As a matter of fact, in a moment, in a moment, we're going to go to uh, Revelation chapter 2. Yeah, and we're going to look at something concerning churches, if you will, including the church today. Yeah, now somebody said, Well, what do you mean, Dr. Ray, the church today? There were no uh, widespread, as it were, churches. Well, there were, there were seven, there were at least seven in, in those days. Yes, <clears throat> we've looked at one at the uh, Ephesus. Yeah, remember we look, looked at Ephesus? Ephesus was a kickback church, laid back, you know. They were saying, well, Okay, then we got it made, we don't need to do anything else. Yeah, we're born again, so when we die, we're going to go to heaven, so we don't do anything else. Yeah, kind of laid back. Yeah, that's the way Ephesus, the the church in Ephesus was. And, of course, the the apostle John was transferring messages that had been given to him to the churches. And we're going to look at Smyrna in a moment. However, right now, we want to look at a person that uh, is uh, he, he's interesting, yeah, if he, even though he was a pagan. His name was Nimrod. Yeah. Nimrod's father's name was what? Nimrod's father's name was Cush. Now, you might wonder, well, why are you on earth, or what on earth, as you might say, does Nimrod have to do with the book of Revelation? I mean, after all, Nimrod was way back in the book of Genesis, right around chapter 10 and 11 or something rather like that, yeah? And we're going to look at that in a moment exactly where Nimrod was. I think it's chapter 11. So you can turn to Genesis chapter 11, and we're going to look at, at, at Nimrod, and then we're going to find out what it is that Nimrod could possibly have to do with the church today, yes. Now, we're going to find out that Nimrod was, in fact, a pagan, if you will, yeah, not a believer in in God as such. Now, I know that there are many people who say, I don't believe in God either. I'm an agnostic or or an atheist or something or other like that. Yeah, I I don't believe in God either. Yeah, but uh, we all, whether we believe it or admit it, might be a better way of saying it, or not, or we we acknowledge, as it were, that there is a God. Because we can't account for some things, yeah? We can say, well, science did that, yeah? 
or our electronic advancement and so forth like that caused those things to happen. No, the stars have been where they are out there for millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of years. Yes, they've been there, perhaps billions of years. I, I, I don't know how long they've been there. Yeah, only God knows that. But so we can't uh, we can't give credit to that to uh, scientific advancement, can we? No, gosh, we're actually in the in the elementary stage, yeah, of dealing with uh, outer space and stars and and planets, yeah, and traveling in space. We barely made it uh, to to the moon. Yes, remember uh, Neil Armstrong? Armstrong I think his name was Neil Armstrong. Stepped on the moon, yeah, for the very first time, right? Well, that was, I think, twice we've been to the moon. I believe it's twice, maybe three times, but twice we've been to, and that's 250,000 miles away, yeah? Okay, what about Mars? What about Jupiter? What about the farthest star from us? It, it may be billions upon billions of miles. Would take you, what, 100 lifetimes to get there. Yeah. Okay. God can get there just like this. Zap. He's there. Yeah. If he if he chooses to be. As a matter of fact, we know that we know that we know that that's true because God is omnipresent. What does that mean, Doctor Ray? Omnipresent. That means that God is everywhere at the same time. Yeah. He can be a billion miles away, a billion billion miles away. Yeah. And still be right here, right in your heart, right here with you. Yeah. He can hear every. Do you realize something else? about God. God can listen to a billion conversations, a billion prayers, all, well, perhaps more than a billion prayers at the same time, and it would be as if he was only listening to you. Yes. And so I said, well, they didn't get a mixed up, Dr. Ray. I mean, after all, you hear a billion people praying at the same time. You would think that, okay, I got uh, Mary Jo's prayer mixed up with Joe Blow's prayer. Yeah. No doesn't happen. Right. That gives us a kind of a nutshell understanding of the God that we're dealing with. I mean, many times you think, well, I know God. Yeah, I understand God. I've read his word. So therefore, I under no, you don't. You don't even come close. It's like as if your understanding, yeah, compared with God's understanding would be if you have the tip of a needle. The very tip of a you know what a needle is a little bitty thing that sometimes you can't thread it. Yeah, I remember my grandmother threading the trying to thread the needles. You know, and sometimes she said, "Well, boy, can you help me thread this needle? You can see you got good eyesight, you know." And uh, her eyesight might have been uh, you know going uh, south, but uh, it's like that needle being sitting in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Now, you know how big the Pacific Ocean, I mean, that's ocean of oceans. And uh, your understanding would be contained on the tip of the needle compared to God's whole Pacific Ocean of understanding. That's kind of a, 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 of a, a feeble attempt at explaining our understanding compared to God's understanding. Now, we're going to look at Nimrod, because Nimrod, believe it or not, it does have uh, emphasis, if you will, for lack of a better word, I'll think of a better one no more, on what's happening in the church today. Yes, we have certain religions, so forth, that uh, in essence, uh, right, came forth out of the religion of Nimrod. Now, okay, what did Nimrod do? Man? You know, some people say, well, you know, we, what do I care about Nimrod? Yeah, paganism came forth out of Nimrod. In other words, Nimrod, in that religion, they had certain things that they wanted to do themselves, and they left God out, yeah? Somebody said, we don't have the liberty religions like that today, Dr. Ray. I beg your pardon. Yes, we do. As a matter of fact, we have one notable, if you will, uh, denomination, if if you will, or religion. I, I don't know how you can categorize it as a denomination and or a religion, but... <clears throat> It wants to control. As a matter of fact, I think somebody in that religion, uh, if you will, said that everybody in the whole world is lost except those who are members of our denomination. Yeah. Now, what are they asking? They say. And uh, they have a, a quote unquote supreme, if you will, leader. Yeah. And people throughout the world look up to him whether they are of that religion or not. 
Yeah. Somebody asked me once, well, Dr. Ray, where is that religion located at? Well, I'll tell you in a moment. I'm not going to tell you right now. But I'm going to tell you how Nimrod connects to that religion that is in that is today, yeah, in the world today, if you will. Okay. Now, notice in your Bible, uh, or what did I say? <laughs> Somebody said you talk about too many things, Dr. Ray. Let's go to the scripture. Uh, Genesis chapter 11, if you will. Okay, Genesis chapter 11, and we, well, we already read some of this, but many times you have to go back so that you get the context, as it were, yeah? Because sometimes you start in the middle of a scripture and somebody says, well, I didn't read the first part of that because I, was, I wasn't listening at that particular time. Well, okay, so we back up, yeah, as it were, and we read into where we left off at the last time. Is that okay? Well, uh, okay, notice now, this is Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. Now, the whole earth had one language. What language was that, Dr. Ray? You know, I don't know, but I know what I believe it was Hebrew, yeah? Or perhaps Arabic, one of those uh, Semitic languages. Yes. Could have been Arabic. Notice. Now, the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain. What's a plain? It's almost like a desert area, you know, with no, no mountains there as such. Because I was thinking about Nimrod earlier. I said, okay, then if Nimrod wanted to build a uh, tower to a Babel, why didn't he start with uh, Mount Everest? <laughs> Now, somebody might say, well, it was too cold up there, Dr. Ray. There, you know, Nimrod's people perhaps were nomads. Is it nomad? Yeah, nomad. And they, they traveled through the deserts, and they were uh, accustomed to hot weather. So going to uh, uh, Mount Everest might have been too chilly for them, okay? In particular, if you were at 25,000 feet or so, notice. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the, uh, from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. <laughs> okay, everybody together. You know, you gotta, it's like you had a, a, a whole bunch of people, all of them going to the same place at the same time to do the same thing. Yeah, and, and they dwelt there, right? Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. You know, they were making bricks. They were baking bricks in those days. I remember uh, working. Did I work at that brickyard? <laughs> there was a brickyard when I was growing up. And I think, uh, either I, I know my brother worked at that brickyard. Yeah. And uh, they made bricks there. And they, they, you know, they put them in an oven and they would, uh, they would, uh, uh, heat them up really hot until they were they, 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 they were red hot, yeah, those bricks. And they became out, came out the hard bricks that they could use for building walls and so forth. Okay, notice. <clears throat> Bake them thoroughly, and they, and they had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. mortar. So you think asphalt is something that, what are we talking? They had asphalt 3,000 years ago, maybe more. I, I don't know. Notice, but they had brick and they had asphalt. Okay. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower. Notice, uh, Nimrod had built cities before. Yeah. This wasn't the first city that Nimrod built, but uh, w w was Babel. No, he had built cities before. Nimrod actually was a smart guy. You know, he was, we would call him an architect, architect if you will, today. Yeah. Because he, he built buildings. You know, it takes architects. Somebody's got to draw it up and uh, so how it's supposed to look. Many people think that architects are engineers. Yeah. Architects are not engineers. They come up with the design of how that building is supposed to look and so forth like that, then you got to have an engineer who will tell you, well, you know, if you put that up like that, it's going to fall down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Notice, if you will. <clears throat> so they got this Tower of Babel that they want to build. What purpose, Dr. Ray? Why, do you, why would you want to build a Tower of Babel? Yeah. Notice. Okay. You know, incidentally, before I read this it, it, anymore, it, it, it was it was not called the Tower of Babel when they were when they were building it when they start building it. Yeah, because they said it was a city. Yeah, going up to heaven. Okay, <clears throat> notice. Build ourselves a city and a tower 
whose top is in the heavens. Now, the heavens is talking about where the stars are, where the moons are, and moon is, where clouds are, and so forth like that. That's how, how high they wanted to go with this building. Now, this is three, 4,000 years ago. Notice. Let us make a name for ourselves. You know, everybody wants to make a name for themselves. It, 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 have you ever watched preachers and so forth on TV and so forth, whatever? They got a name, you know, like John John Ministries, or Bill the Johnson Ministries, or Mary Jones Ministries. Yeah? They're trying, they're, now I'm not putting them down. Somebody said, well, you're saying that they're wrong, Dr. Ray, that they're, they're sinners. No, I'm simply saying, stating a fact, a, a statement of fact, if you will. Yeah, they named the ministry after themselves. Okay, notice them. <clears throat> Let's make a name for ourselves. <clears throat> lest, notice, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. In other words, they, they were saying, okay, then if we don't make a name for ourselves so that people know who we are, yeah, we may be dispersed all over the place, right? And nobody knows, nobody will remember. Remember that book by James Baldwin when he said, nobody knows my name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, they want you to know their name, you know? Remember my name, yeah, okay. Okay, I have a legacy, in other words. Notice verse 5, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Okay. Now, somebody said to me, well, Dr. Ray, why did God have to come down here to the earth to see it? Can he see from heaven? He can see a billion miles, can he? Yeah. As if he had a telescope looking directly at what Nimrod was doing. Perhaps, but, you know, many times God wants to do things so that we can get it. You know, not that he does it for himself so that we can understand it. Because we can't understand a God that's a billion, billion miles away, knowing exactly what Nimrod is doing yeah, here on earth. <laughs> but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built, and the Lord said, Now notice, it said had built. <clears throat> but the Lord and the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one. Notice are one. Now, somebody asked me once, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ray, well, do you think, well, why do we have so many denominations nowadays, Dr. Ray? Perhaps. Now, I'm underlining the word perhaps. Perhaps it's God's will that we have all these different denominations today because we would be like you know who, his name was never right, if we did not perhaps have all of these denominations. There are many people who think that all Christian denominations should come together and be Uno, be one, yeah? Well, I got news for you. Yeah, right here. Nimrod thought the same thing. You know, he had all these people together. Yeah, they were all one. Isn't that what the scripture says? The people are one. Notice that. Okay, there are, there, are, there are those today who believe that all of these religions, no matter whether they're Jewish or, 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 or Arab or... <clears throat> I don't want to name different people. Yeah, I'll just say all of these denominations, all of these different religions, and all that stuff. Some believe that they all should come together, and we should all be one big Christian group. Well, you know what? <clears throat> that wouldn't work. It didn't work here. Notice what God said: the people are one, and they have one language. And this is what they began to do. In other words, God said, you know, if they were doing the right thing, perhaps I could allow them to go on, right? If they had a righteous thing to do, in other words, yeah, that would be okay. But if you got all the people together, they're all one, and all of these denominations and all of these different uh, religions today all got together, and they all decided to do one thing. Yes, there is, <clears throat> believe it or not. One denomination or one religion today that believes that they are the only ones, one, that counts. All, everybody else are pagans and so forth, yeah? And if you don't become a part of them, you're going to hell, yeah? That's what they will tell you, right? That, that they are the only way. Well, the Bible doesn't say they are the only way. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, yeah, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by him. But this religion, today, it is in the world here in, the, in this country and in various other countries, today, who believe that they're the ones, their, their name, I'm going to give this away in a moment, their name means universal. Yeah, Some of you may know who I'm talking about, Yeah, but I'm not going to say it. Notice, 
The people are one, and they have one language, and this is what they began to do. Now, now God doesn't just look at things and say, oh, oh, well. You know, many times people will say to you, oh, well, it'll all work out. No, it won't. <laughs> yeah. It'll all, it'll all come out in the wash. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. No, you have to do something if you want to change it. It's like people who are, who are going to die go to hell, right? If you say, well, oh, it's all right. You know, God will save them. <laughs> yeah. If you preach the gospel, if you bring the gospel to them, God is not preaching the gospel as such. <clears throat> in the flesh. Okay, so we have to do it. Notice what God does. Okay, now, nothing they propose to do will be withheld from them. Now, why did God say that? Nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them? Because he's saying that they can do anything they want to do, yeah, as long as they all stick together. You know, have you ever heard that term divide and conquer? I know if you heard that term divide and conquer. Well, that's what it is. You know, as long as Nimrod could keep all of those people together, then they could accomplish almost anything. Underline the word almost, almost anything. And God recognized that. Notice they proposed to do will be nothing they proposed to do will be withheld from them. Come. Now God said, okay, I got to mess this thing up. You know, I can't allow, yeah, this religion to spread all over the world, right? I've got denominations, you know, people who are from here, there, and so forth, denominations, right, today. And now uh, I'm going to tell you in a moment what Nimrod has to do with that religion today. Notice, let us go down, this is verse 7, and there confuse their language. You, you might think, okay, then the way we, uh, what do we want to do today? If we got some country like, uh, well, I won't name the countries, but there are several countries that we think should not have the bomb, quote unquote bomb. Yeah, we got it. We got billions of them, but we don't think other countries should have it. So what do we do? We say, okay, we're going to stop them, yeah, uh, in a way that uh, we, well, we may bomb them, yeah? We might drop our bomb on them so that they can't drop their bomb on us, right? That's Basically what it is, you know, we're responsible people, yes. Guess what? <laughs> I, believe it or not, this country, America, is the only country in the history of the world, yeah, who has dropped an atomic bomb on other peoples and killed thousands, if not millions, of people. We're the only ones. Yet we say we yeah, are the responsible yeah, people with the atomic with the atomic bomb, and therefore that country and that country and that country, you know, they're they're rebelish type countries. So we can allow them to have it, even though they've never. Okay, you get my drift. Okay, notice. Let us go down there and confuse their language that they may not understand one another. Okay, one another's speech. And, you know, we've got that capability now, don't we? So that people don't understand one another's speech, don't we? Somebody said, no, Dr. Ray, we've got simultaneous interpretation. At the United Nations building, we have simultaneous interpretation, said that in our, so that if you are of a language and uh, someone is up speaking and you don't speak that language, your, that language would be interpreted to you simultaneously. In other words, if the, if the person who's speaking says, we're going to shoot down a plane over Iraq tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock with 100,000 people on that plane. Not 100,000. You can't get that many on, you can't get that many on a 747, can you? So, oh, okay, 300 people out there. 747. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, no, we're going to shoot that out. So in your language, you would understand immediately what that person is saying. If he was speaking in Swahili, yeah, and you only understood uh, Japanese, you would know exactly what he says immediately. Like, like as soon as the word, each word comes out of his mouth, it goes into your ear in your language. That's simultaneous, yeah, interpretation. We have that capability Today, yes, at the United Nations. Notice, if you will, let us go down there and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Evidently, Nimrod didn't have that simultaneous uh, interpretation, right? Yeah. So, 
<laughs> now, okay, hand me a brick is, is what Nimrod's the workers were saying. Hand me a brick. And the other guy was looking at him, what is he saying? Yeah. Well, what's up? It, it's like sometimes, you know, when you're watching television and you're flipping up through the, the stations and you come up on a foreign language station and you say, what are they saying? Yeah. You don't know what they're saying. Yeah. Well, okay. You get what it was. Somebody is what? 10,000 feet high, yeah, in the air, putting up a building, and he wants a brick. Yeah. And you hand him a, a glass of water. Well, that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> no. Water won't build a tower. Notice. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Why did they cease? They didn't understand each other. You know, you had a, one language here and another language there and another one over there and another one over there. Somebody asked me once, well, Dr. Ray, is that where all the different nation nationalities came from? Because various nationalities speak different languages, right? Like if you're from Africa, maybe you speak Swahili, although the Africans have all kinds of dialects of languages. <laughs> yeah, not simply Swahili, if you will, but there are all kinds of dialects of languages there. Uh, even in this country here, we have dialects of languages, right? Like there are people who are from uh, southern Louisiana or something so like that. They have a language. It's English, but it's, uh, I, I can't remember exactly what the name of it, but it's so messed around until you, if you talk to them, you wouldn't understand them. As a matter of fact, there may be some people from New York, New England or something, yeah, who are speaking English and you wouldn't get it. Even if they're from England, from British uh, languages, sometimes you're listening to this, I don't get what, what they I know they're talking English, but I don't get it, yeah. Okay, now, <clears throat> Now, God scattered them all over the earth. Notice this, if you will. Did I look away from the camera? Well, I'm looking back at it now. Notice this. The Lord scattered them abroad from, the, from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Now, you know, I got a question about that because when he, when, when he confused the languages, there had to be several hundred thousand or whatever of people who all had the same language. Then another hundred thousand who had the same language. Then another hundred thousand. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm assuming that those people who, who, whose language were the same after they were confused, all of them got together and went one place. All the others went another place. You, you get my drift? Okay. Notice. Therefore, <clears throat> therefore, in verse 9, Therefore, its name is called Babel. What does what does Babel mean? Yeah. Okay. Babel goes all the way back to <coughs> Nimrod's father. Does anybody know who Nimrod's father was? <laughs> Nimrod's father's name was Cush. Yeah. Cush means black. That word uh, Cush, if, if you look at it, it, means black. In other words, Cush was of African descent. Therefore, yeah, if Cush was of African descent, guess what? <clears throat> Nimrod was of African descent, okay? As a matter of fact, Nimrod and Cush were so, how would you call it, messed up? Nimrod, the, the, the name Cush means, I bet you don't know what the name Cush means. Cush means chaos. You know what chaos means? Confusion. In other words, Cush was so confused, and then he had a son, okay, <clears throat> named Nimrod. Now, you may think, okay, then what's wrong with having a son named Nimrod? Well, Nimrod ultimately married, what was his mother's name? Uh, let me find it. Give me a second, will you? Simarius. No, that's not right. I want to pronounce it correctly. Semiramis. Semiramis was Nimrod's <clears throat> mother. Cush died, and guess what happened? Nimrod married his own mother, as a matter of fact. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> then, I, I don't know how, how uh, Semiramis got pregnant. I, I don't believe it was by Nimrod, but he, he married his own mother. And uh, then uh, Semiramis had a child, okay? And she said that that child was a reincarnation 
of Nimrod after after Nimrod died. Somebody killed Nimrod. Just you know, obviously. So that was gonna happen to Nimrod. Okay. Now, my name is Dr. Ray, in case you're wondering, well, who is that preacher? You know what? What is he talking about? We're talking about the book of uh, Revelation. In particular, right now, we're in the book of Genesis, yeah? Talking about Nimrod. Next, guess what? Next time we're gonna be in the book of Revelation. Yes, chapter two. And we're going to be talking about a city by the name of Smyrna, okay? And we're going to talk about how it is that paganism came all the way from Nimrod down to us today, yes? We'll talk about that. My name is Dr. Ray. We have a church that's located at 4153 Overland Avenue, Culver City, California. We have a service there every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. until 1030 a.m. Now, everybody is welcome to come to that church, right? What's the name of the church called Linda Vista Christian Center? Okay, <clears throat> Linda it means beautiful, <laughs> and... Uh, Vista means a beautiful sight, yeah? So you can know what it means. Anyway, okay, you know what? We're just about this program out has of time. blessing to you and your family or has helped you in any way, please feel free to write to us and pray for us. Remember also, we need and appreciate your financial support. Please send your financial gifts and love offerings to Dr. Ray Winston at P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. That's Dr. Ray Winston, P.O. Box 1173, Culver City, California, 90232. You also may call Dr. Ray at area code 310-559-8320 or 800-747-8320. Remember also, God loves a cheerful giver.